Hey folks, this is Kalani. The public test films were finally updated with a new Mythic Plus affix reaping. It's pretty crazy to think that we've only just been given a hands-on experience with this new affix, and it's going live in less than two weeks. I doubt that's even enough time to actually make any changes at this point, but at least we get to have a look-see at what this affix is actually about, and how it plays. So to cover all of the bases here, Reaping is a new affix that will be present on all plus 10 keys and above. It's going to be on every key that Infested was on, and Infested will never be seen again. That could actually be a really interesting thing for the last stretch of this expansion though, rotate the seasonal affixes through everything that we get as we progress through BFA. That could be a lot of fun, but that's not why we're here. With Season 2 starting and everything being about Bon Sandy, our new Reaping affix follows suit quite nicely, but how does it work? In a reaping dungeon, every time you kill a monster, it will leave behind a little ghost version of itself. You can't interact with these ghosts at all, they just sit there and wait until a reaping is triggered. Whenever you progress 20% on your required trash meter, so at 20%, 40%, 60%, 80%, and 100%, Von Sandy will pop out of nowhere and trigger reaping. Every one of those passive ghosts will beeline for your group, from wherever it is you killed their original NPC, that means you have 20% worth of the dungeon's trash chasing you when reaping gets triggered. This can make for some pretty hilarious results and overall is quite a lot of fun. You need to be very careful when approaching these 20% marks, because if you're still fighting a pack of monsters but one monster dying triggers reaping, those ghosts won't wait for you, so you'll have to deal with the rest of your trash pack as well as the entire horde of reaping ghosts. While reaping ghosts will chase you from practically anywhere in the dungeon, they won't aggro anything that they they run by, so you don't have to worry about being super careful about that kind of thing. If you wipe during a reaping wave, all of the ghosts will return to their original locations, but they won't be passive. They also come with a very large aggro radius, so it's going to be hard to skip over any ghosts that you don't manage to kill the first time around. If you do manage to skip over ghosts via stealth or dropping combat, or any other means of resetting the ghosts, whenever you next trigger a reaping, all remaining ghosts will start chasing you, so if you don't kill the reaping wave from 0 to 20% trash, you will get both the 0 to 20% wave and the 20 to 40% wave at the same time when you trigger the 40% reaping. That might be a bad thing, or that could end up being a legit strategy. We'll have to wait and see how things pan out. Using the line of sight seems to work very well for grouping the spirits up to nuke them down, so keep an eye out for pillars, houses, and anything else you can use, but this new wave of trash has a few abilities of its own. Depending on the monsters that you kill, different ghosts will appear in each reaping wave. Any normal run-of-the-mill melee mobs that you kill will spawn a Risen Soul. These are the fodder mob, and they only have one ability. Every time they melee a target, they apply a magic debuff that deals 2% of that player's max health every 3 seconds, and it stacks. So this can start to hurt pretty badly, as you can imagine. There's usually a lot of Risen Souls in any given reaping wave as well, but because it's a magic debuff, it can be cleared quite often. Any ranged monster that just likes to stand still and shoot a group from afar, or any mob that has a lot of spells that they like to chain cast, will spawn a tormented soul when the reaping occurs. These souls will stand at range and chain cast Grave Bolt. This deals 25% of a player's max health whenever they get hit, so if four tormented souls all target the same player and all get their cast off, that's the lights out for that chap. Thankfully, it is a very long cast time, a whopping 5 seconds, so you have plenty of time to get an interrupt off, or to try and line of sight the caster to get them all clumped up nicely. The last type of soul that can appear is the Lost Soul. These come from any lieutenant or special monster that you kill, like the reanimated Honor Guards in the Taldazar or the Iron Tide Enforcers in Freehold. You know, the really annoying monsters. These ones are bad news. They'll try to cast Shadow Smash, which is the purple circle you can see here. Any player that gets hit by that will have their max health reduced by 20% for one minute. That single debuff could mess up your key at high levels, so you need to be very wary. Whenever a Lost Soul dies, they also cover the ground in little swirls. Not only not only do those swells deal a nasty amount of damage, but anyone who gets hit will get knocked back and have their damage and healing reduced by 10% for 30 seconds, and that stacks. Again, this debuff could ruin any higher level keys very easily. So a typical reaping wave will be made up of a lot of risen souls, a handful of tormented souls, and then one or two lost souls. It's also going to entirely depend on how you decide to pull your trash in any given dungeon, so trash really is going to mean a lot more when this affix goes live. We found it easiest to slow down trash pulls as we were nearing that 20% mark, and try to start a reaping wave as cleanly as possible. Because the ghosts just make a run for your group, not all of them will be running towards your tank straight away, so your tank needs to quickly pick up all of the melee mobs 
and probably drag them over to the ranged mobs just to ensure everything is nicely stacked up. Blow them all up with AoE stunts and cleave, and you shouldn't have too many issues. After the smaller ants are dead, the lost souls usually take a bit longer to kill, but then you can just single target them down. Each soul has health equal to 50% of the monster's health that it's spawned from, so these aren't just wimpy ghosts that will poof away if you sneeze on them. In actuality, you kind of have to kill half the trash you've already killed in the dungeon again every time reaping goes off. The only difference is that they won't have anywhere near as many abilities, and most will group up quite nicely. I reckon you're still going to need to save some decent AoE burst cooldowns to deal with reaping waves cleanly and reliably, and especially keep a hold of some of those AoE stuns. I was a little bit worried about how reaping was going to pan out when we had some brief idea about how it was going to work. Trash resurrecting and chasing us through the dungeon could have been done a variety of ways, but I think this execution is actually pretty good. I know a lot of players don't think trash is a good idea. More trash is even worse, and oh my gosh, how did they think adding more trash to dungeons was a good idea when that's the one thing we've been complaining about the most? But this trash doesn't really have that many abilities, it's not going to be too problematic to deal with. You have one type of monster to really worry about, the rest can be mowed down fairly easily. Having an entire horde of mobs rushing towards you is also pretty cool. It's kind of like those huge AoE pools that you get really excited to see a lot of large numbers, but they're coming to you. If you love AoE fests, you should love this affix. And just in case you're wondering, it looks like all of these souls basically ignore every other affix. They didn't drop Sanguine, I doubt they'll trigger Bolstering or even Necrotic. The only way to keep this single affix fun is to separate it from the others, I think. If these chaps applied Necrotic, or dropped Sanguine, or Bolstered, or spawned Explosive Orbs, you know, pretty much any of the affix would actually break this entire idea, I think. None of them really work well, but all of them would create an extremely frustrating situation, so I hope they don't apply affixes for pretty much anything. That should hopefully keep things more consistent as the weeks go by. The way that Infested changed every week was kind of interesting, but it was also a little annoying having to relearn the dungeons every week and then tack on the changing affixes on top of that. It was definitely a different experience when compared to Legion. You couldn't just learn a dungeon and its pulls for each affix and be done, but I don't think Reaping is going to have any aspect that changes either. The only thing they could do is slightly change the percentage of trash that triggers a Reaping. Right now it's every 20%, but I guess they could shift it up or down a percent or two to change things up, but I really hope they don't. Having something remain reliable for once would be fantastic. So how is this new affix going to change things up in the Mythic Plus scene? I think we might be able to progress to higher keys a little faster, because instead of Infested slowing us down in every other pack, Reaping can be dealt with very quickly and only really needs to be dealt with a few times throughout the entire dungeon. So we might be able to go a little quicker and pull more packs together as long as we don't trigger a Reaping when we don't want to, because we're not going to have to deal with that AoE heal from Infested anymore. Now, you might have thought to yourself, well, what if we just drop aggro with the souls? If everyone on my team can vanish or feign death or even shadow meld for the night elves, what happens then? Well, the ghosts will return to their original location. As I said before, they'll have a huge aggro radius, and they'll come running after you with the next reaping wave. But if you can drop combat with the ghosts every single reaping wave... Well, now we're talking strategy. I'm sure we'll see some groups trying this for sure. It might end up faster, or it might end up being a complete waste of time. We'll see how it goes. Another interesting side effect this could end up having, though, is always killing the bosses before finishing the trash percentage. A reaping occurs every 20%, including at 100%. So if you hit 100% trash before killing the last boss, you'll have to deal with one extra wave of reaping when compared to killing the last boss before finishing trash. If the last boss is dead before you hit 100% on the trash, when you do go back and clear out what little trash you need, that last reaping wave doesn't occur. That's probably going to be faster in the majority of dungeons where it's quick to go back for trash after the last boss. This could also introduce some interesting trash pulling into bosses, or DKs holding the very last trash mob if it's undead, your group needs for completion and dismissing their control right as the last boss dies. I'm sure we'll see some crazy strats taking advantage of this little quirk, but with how reaping currently works, I think it is safe to say that the current meta will remain throughout the next season of Mythic Plus. Right now, strong AoE damage and AoE crowd control is highly sought after. Add in an affix, which basically doubles the amount of trash, which all needs to get AoE down, and I think that tips the scales even further in their favor. If you can't do some crazy AoE damage, your class might fall out of favor when this affix goes live. Seeing as we might also want to skip over more trash so we can kill the last boss before we finish the trash meter, rogues being able to AoE stealth past a few more groups might 
also be even more valuable in Season 2, so I wouldn't expect the status quo to shift at all, really, which might disappoint some of you. There is one other new effect in any Mythic Plus dungeon that has Reaping active, but when Sandy appears at the start of the dungeon, and if you ever deplete the key you're running, you can run back to him and strike a deal. If you accept Bon Sandy's bargain, you gain 20% additional damage and healing until you complete the dungeon. So if you're running a key above 10 and you get stuck, there might still be a chance of completing that key by using this bargain, but it's only available after you deplete a key. I've tested a few dungeons and Bon Sandy only appears in keys with a reaping affix, so he won't be offering any help in lower dungeons, but that extra 20% might be just what you need to finish a key for the week and maybe get some shiny loot to boot. This does come with a cost, however. Accepting a deal from the Lower of Death will mark you with a debuff called Death's Burden. The debuff reads, you have accepted the aid of Buon Sandy. But at what cost? So that's a little worrying, and we have no idea what that debuff does just yet, and it lasts for two hours. It might become pardon of achievement somewhere, or it might limit how many times you can use the bargain in Mythic Plus dungeons. Putting a two hour cooldown on it wouldn't be that surprising, but some players think that your character will just fall down dead at the end of the two hour debuff. It's also possible that the intended effects of this debuff just aren't on the PTR yet, so we might not know until Season 2 goes live. But that's all the info I have about the Reaping Affix, hopefully I didn't leave anything out. What do you think from what you've seen so far? A Horde of Souls? charging towards your current location and all you can do is sit and wait and then blast them to smithereens sounds fun right leave all your thoughts in the comments section below a big thank you to all of our supporters over on patreon you can see their names floating by on screen if you want to join these with the guys and gals you can find a link in the description below remember to leave a like just below the video before you leave and if you want to see more make sure to subscribe but apart from that thanks for watching folks good luck and have fun and as always i will see you next time